Redneck Computer Geek here, and welcome to my version of the Redneck Computer Geek One Point Hitch. Basically, what we're going to be doing is converting a couple of things over and being able to set up a winch assisted one point hitch on this GT6000 that we lovingly call Main Mudmore 2.0. So, I'm going to reposition the camera. We're going to take a look at what the core components are here and go from there. Alright, so as you can see here, there's kind of a weird ensemble. What in the world here makes a one-point hitch? The answer is, I couldn't afford, at the time, the one-point hitch that sold on Amazon. It's about 140 bucks. It's done by Impact. And I'll post a link to it down in the description, the one that they're selling now. They actually were in the middle of transitioning during the time I was about to make this. So, we're going to make a poor man's version. We're going to run it off a winch, and here's how. This is a Kurt All-Terrain hookup. I like the design. The welds are great. The one thing I'm going to totally scuff them on is the fact that they're powder coating absolutely sucks. I ended up actually nicking it with my nail while I was looking into it. This is a trail guard hitch and it's got this clasp on the end of it. Now the clasp is not what we're going to be using. What we're going to actually be using is the end of the hitch itself. Now on the end of it you're going to find a couple of rubbers and the actual hitch itself is a 7 8 So, when we went down to the regular hardware store and we bought a 3 quarter inch with 7 8 adapters. What that's going to do is it's going to allow us to put this through and use this 2 inch adapter. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to segment out this end here and we're going to round it off giving us a pivoting point that can be reinforced by three quarter inch washers like so from there we'll mount a winching point on here somewhere we'll have our regular clevis pin point on the end of it for our one point hitch when you look up these curts, the way that they're meant to be mounted is actually this way. Which is absolutely stupid as far as I'm concerned because you're putting a bolt through the end of a flange. Whether you're on a lawn tractor or whether you're on an ATV, it's not going to matter. You're going to bend the snot out of that connection. So, what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the curt and we're going to rotate it, line it up with this back plate, and we're going to cut a hole through here and we're going to press the curt down in leaving this also here now why would I leave this pin it's because if I'm using a regular lawn tractor wagon if I'm using anything that has to do with a regular lawn tractor implement this will be able to hook onto it and pull it along with whatever I'm using for the one point hitch attachment out the rear.
I just want to take a sec in order to talk about downforce. Part of the point of having a one point or a three point hitch or something like that is the ability to take something like this time rake and drive it down into the ground in order to be able to agitate and bring things up. And that's where this comes into play. Um, what I have here is I have a piece of one by stock, just regular hardware stock, coming up from the hitch and I've got a couple of catch points because I wasn't sure where the winch was going to really hit. And then I've got it reinforced in order to be able to pull against it. But the other thing I have is this horrifically welded together, thanks Austin for helping me, piece of three quarter. And the point of this three quarter is that when you're driving along just normal, you put it back like this. But if I flip it, It now becomes something that I can pressure against me. Right there. And so eventually I'll put a pad on it. Or, whoops, I sat on the button. Or, I did it again. Okay, that was brilliant. Let's try not to hit it with our butt cheek this time. Or if I have it going the other direction, I just need pressure for a little bit. I can lean back, I can press, or I can drive like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive forward and I'm gonna come back up through on the same spot with pressure applied, just so you see the difference in how it grates. So as you can see, it was a tad bit muddy for a test drive. I need to let it dry out a little bit more. Perhaps maybe listen to the fiance before I get overzealous about getting into the muddy soil. But you know, it was a good test of the tire chains to see how well they would hold up. I really recommend the Peerless tire chains. They work really well on these GT 6000s. Have fun guys. Thanks for watching. Down in the description, you'll find every single thing I bought in order to go and build this so you can do one yourself.